everyone, my name is Miranda, but you probably know me better by my Instagram name, at Mother of Serpents. Today I have Elton with me, who is looking fresh to death like he just had a brand new shed, which he did. And today I want to talk to you guys about what to do in power outages when you keep reptiles. I live in Maine, which is basically just always at varying degrees of eternal winter. And even though this winter so far has been pretty mild, we are expecting foot or more of snow on Sunday. <laughs> Now, I'm just completely over snow. I hate winter, but- Winter is coming. But add in reptile to the mix, and it can honestly be pretty devastating sometimes. If you lose power, obviously heat is essential to keeping reptiles, and it can be a really scary time if you don't have heat and you're not sure how to keep your reptiles warm. So I've compiled a list of what to do when you lose power and you keep reptiles. A lot of this was taken straight from the ball python enthusiast file. It was written by Diana Heidman, so credit to her. I'm not trying to say that I came up with any of this. I'm basically just relaying the information and putting it out there for people who may need it. So the first thing that you want to do if you lose power, basically the first 12 hours, don't do anything. You really don't need to. Don't check your enclosures because all you're going to do is let the heat out. If you know that you might get a winter storm and you're in an area where you might lose power, don't feed your snakes. The reason for this is because snakes require heat to digest their food, and if they don't have access to proper heat and you lose power, then you have a very high risk of regurgitation happening, which can be very, very bad for snakes. You definitely want to eliminate this possibility of happening. So if you think that you might lose power, don't feed your snakes. So if you end up losing power for probably 12 to 72 hours, they say is a good line to when you should start thinking about doing something. Remember that there are days we're in the wild, you know, there's different heat patterns. Generally reptiles will be okay for two to three days without any sort of heat as long as it's not, you know, freezing cold. So some things you can do to help insulate their enclosure is to add more substrate. If you're using paper towel, this doesn't really apply to you. It's mostly if you're just using like a wet substrate or aspen. Just make sure that you add a little extra because it'll act as insulation. You also want to make sure that you have plenty of access to fresh, clean water for your reptiles to drink. You just want to make sure that they always have access to fresh, clean water and in a power outage, that's no exception. Also, cover your enclosures with, with a nice, thick blanket. This will help trap the heat inside their enclosures. It's also a good idea where if you're able to, to move your tubs or your racks or your PVC enclosures into a small enclosed space, such as a closet, because this helps trap the heat inside, whereas in a big open room, like a living room or something, you're gonna be losing a lot of heat. It's just a lot of area to heat up. If you have a confined space, it's so much easier to keep heat in there. Again, this isn't like something that you have to do if you have a big rack or just something that's really cumbersome to move. Don't worry, it's not essential that you do this, it's just a tip. Also, if you can, make sure, if you have an idea that you might be getting a big storm, it's a good idea to maybe a day or two before raise the temperatures in your enclosure just by a few degrees so that if you do lose power, your reptiles just have a little bit extra heat. Now, here are some things that you should never do if you lose power. A lot of people will suggest that you use hand warmers, warm water bottles, or put your enclosure right next to a fireplace. Here's why you should never do any of those things. To start off, hand warmers get very, very hot. There is no way to regulate the temperature. They can reach temperatures of 112 degrees Fahrenheit, which is way too hot for your reptiles, for most of them. I'm assuming most of these people have ball pythons that are watching. That is way too hot for your ball python. Never put an unregulated heat source of any kind in your enclosure. Trust me, you'll end up with burns. It'll be better if they spend a few days chilly than if you just completely cook them. Hot water bottles. A lot of people will suggest to put a hot water bottle in there. And the thing with that is it creates a lot of moisture and humidity, but hot water bottles don't last forever. So if you were to put one in your little snake's enclosure, eventually it's just going to cool off and it's going to freeze the inside of the enclosure and it's going to also raise the humidity a lot and that is just a recipe for respiratory infections which is horrible obviously you don't want to have a respiratory infection so just avoid it all along seriously your snakes will be fine if they go a little bit without heat there's nothing to worry about they would rather be a little cold than freezing cold with a respiratory infection or piping hot and being cooked another thing you should never do is put them directly near a fireplace for another reason that we can kind of feel what's too hot and we have no way of knowing what's too hot for them they can't really tell us so don't ever stick them right near the fireplace if you're without heat for maybe 
for several days at a time, then maybe you can start placing them in a room with a fireplace, but like not quite in, you know, the line of fire, but just in a place where it could slowly warm them up. So what should you do if you're without power for three or more days? At this point, your reptile is probably pretty cold and there are a few things that you can do. This is the one time where people can recommend that you cuddle with your reptile. Body heat is a great way to transfer and if they're very cold, then body heat is a good way to warm them up gradually so it doesn't shock their system. You can just kind of hold them against you and give them a little hug. A lot of times it'll look like they're hugging you back but all they're doing is leeching off your body heat. Unfortunately, they're not thanking you for hugging them. They just want to be warm probably as much as you do. So again, that's a good way to heat them up. Another thing you can do if it gets really bad, you can, if you have a car, access to a vehicle, you can turn the heat on in that and bring them into a heated car for you know a few hours at a time. Make sure the temperature is controlled, that it's not too hot, and that your reptile is comfortable. Another thing that you can do is get a bowl of lukewarm water. And when I say lukewarm, you know, boil it on the stove, wait for it to cool off. Then if you can put your hand in it and it's comfortable, that's a good temperature for the reptile. Don't just be like, hey, bath time, and then just dunk them in. Don't do that. Let them go in on their own. They'll probably be drawn to the heat if it's been a while without any and they're chilly. <laughs> but let them stay in as long as they want. Don't try to force them in. All that's going to do is cause stress or ball pythons are not aquatic, so generally soaking is very stressful for them. But if it's a case like this, and the other alternative is them freezing, obviously, you know, a little bath isn't gonna hurt them. But just, as always, act responsibly. All right, so what do you do once the power comes back on? A lot of people may just be like, oh, just stick them back in the enclosure and heat them up as quickly as possible. No, if your snake has been exposed to cold for long periods of time, and is cold, and when I say cold, I mean freezing and not just a little cool or whatever, freezing, your snake has been without heat for a long time, it's extremely bad to heat them up right away, to try to get them as hot as quickly as possible. This is going to shock their system and you need to gradually warm them up. And the ways that you can do that, again, are hold them close for body heat, lower the temperature in your enclosure to what you normally keep it and then gradually raise the temperature every hour until it's back to normal you don't want to shock their system sometimes they can be very sensitive with things like this and it all it's going to do is cause unnecessary stress it can harm your snake and you don't want that to happen obviously i hope but with that being said if your snake is still cold you should probably wait three to four days with normal temperatures and make sure that everything is back to where it should be before you try to feed your snake will thank you if it misses, you know, a week or two of feeding instead of you thinking that you should feed it and then it regurgitates. That just, your snake will be fine if it misses a couple feedings due to a power outage. It might not be fine if it regurgitates. Something else that's really important to do after you lose power for a long time is to be on the lookout for the signs of a respiratory infection. I do want to make another video all about common health issues with snakes, but just know that if you hear whistling, a crackling, or your snake is yawning a lot, more than usual, and bubbles are blowing out of its mouth and its nose, that is a sign of a respiratory infection. Home remedies for respiratory infections don't work. Repeat after me, they don't work. Take your snake to a vet, have it checked out, and get the proper antibiotics. Do not think you can handle something like this on their own. That is how reptiles die. I'm so serious with this. Please take your snake to a vet if you have any signs of a respiratory infection. So I hope this video may be helpful to those who live in a state that it's cold, it's gonna snow. Everyone, please be safe if you're being affected by I will be, of course, answering anyone's questions. Um, your question still was not answered in the video or something happened. If you wanna DM me on Instagram or something, I'll be more than happy to walk you through it and try to talk. I would love to just, you know, support people who are going through the same thing. As always, stay safe out there. If things get bad enough that people have to, for some reason, stay at a hotel, <laughs> don't leave your snakes behind. They are pets. They deserve the same care and, you know, responsibility for your other pets. Just because it's a little scaly thing doesn't mean that you should leave it behind. Just always, always take care of your pet. I hope that it blows over. Of course, at this point, the forecast has just been increasing and increasing, and it went from 5 to 8 inches to 8 to 12, and now they're just like, yeah, you're going to get a foot plus of snow. Oh, so. this is hard for you. But winter is coming. We know what's coming with it. We can't face it alone. So, you know, take care, guys. If I don't freeze to death, I'll see you in the next video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like this. Share this video with your friends. 
I hope it helped. If you have any more tips, leave them in the comments for other people. Until next time, adios.